I don't know, I'm six foot four, 25 stone. I've got a belly bigger than the, like most people's. I can still see my dick, just so you know. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Luke and this is the long awaited Q&A video that you've all been waiting for. So the idea of this video is that um, over the last few weeks, couple of months, I've been compiling a few of your questions up and this video is gonna answer um, some of your questions. I've also got two cameras, got another camera over here facing me. This is my SLR, uh, it's a Canon 600D, yeah, Canon 600D SLR. And I got you on my GoPro as well, so gonna do a bit of uh, looking at both just to see how it goes and um, yeah let's crack on with it I guess I guess so first question comes from I got all the uh, all the questions on my phone so I'm gonna be reading off my phone and uh, hopefully that's gonna be all right the first question comes to or comes from uh, Harvey John Drew now Harvey John Drew says hi Luke I have subbed to you this weekend and already watched like 10 videos in brackets i'm addicted i'm 12 years old and have dreams of become a class one or two but i was just wondering if you thought it would be a good career to go into and how you got into truck driving keep up the good work loved your one hour long work of one hour long week of work vid by the way right so basically what you're asking is is it a good career and how did i get into it so i mean i think it's a good career as i wouldn't have got into it myself um, I, I've, I've done a lot of retail jobs, I've done a lot of uh, customer service jobs if you like and one thing that always stuck in my head is that I just, I always wanted to be on the road. I thought about becoming a van driver, uh, doing multi-delivering jobs, driving a van, but um, even though I applied for loads of jobs I just couldn't get a job, they, they wanted it, the experience. Um, so I just, I just carried on working in retail until I, until I until I lost it really, and I just thought, enough is enough. I want to drive a truck. So I got, I left, I left my retail job, I've mentioned loads of times, uh, working for Curious, I left that job. I uh, worked for a logistics company, who, well, and my job role was basically loading up vehicles during the night, and just sort of basically getting knowledge of, of, of the HGV world. And then while I was working at a logistics company, I decided to go through all my theories and my tests and my practicals, and I, I got it all done. And I think from start to finish, I started doing my tests in January, and by March I had my license, I was fully qualified. So January, February, March, like within about two and a half months, uh, 10 weeks if you like. So uh, yeah, I, I passed my test quite quickly. Um, and what was it? How uh, is it a good career and how you got into truck? Is it a good career and how you got into truck driving? Yeah, so I basically just answered that, didn't I? So yeah, next question comes from Will Lawrence. Any advice from a 17 year old considering going into class C or C plus E next year? Thanks. Well, Will, um, any advice going into it? I mean, it's, I hear it's difficult. I've been remarkably lucky getting my job, um, which I'm, I'm pretty sure I touch on later. Um, I didn't have any experience. I just passed my test and I managed to get a job with the company I'm with now. A lot, of, a lot of people like two years experience and I hear that a few companies or quite, the majority of companies like the drivers to be at least 21 years old. So, I mean, by all means, take your test and do, do your license, but you might find it hard getting a job. You'll, um, you'll have to start at the low end, that's for sure. You're gonna have to do agency work. Uh, sort of get more and more experience but when you're my age and, and you've been driving since 17 you'll be a fucking pro mate so I say crack on with it like do it uh, and Scott Rigby also said Luke any advice for a new driver past my class 2 in November just looking for some advice cheers mate uh, my best advice I would say to anybody who's just got their license and has a job always listen to the people who've been doing it for years. Like, if they tell you to do something one way, there's a reason why it's being done that way. Whether it's faster, quicker, just more professional, they, no offense to anyone, but they will know better than you. So always listen to the people who are, not necessarily higher up than you, but who've been doing the job longer than you. Like, 
if they tell you to go a certain way into a certain place, go that way. Um, it's, they wouldn't tell you it for no reason. Right, uh, Razor McKay. Hi Luke, love your vids dude. Uh, I passed my class two June 2015 and have been driving skip lorries, but it feels to s but it feels it's time to step up to the tippers. But they scare me bejesus. I can't read for shit. They scare, they scare the bejesus out of me. Any tips slash advice? I can't seem to overcome my fear. Cheers buddy, Ray. Well right, Ray. Um, tipping lorries, they look quite scary, I must admit. Um, and when you're tipping, it, it is on the full point of your mind, you know, am I going to tip over with it? Because you can't tip on a, a banked sort of road. If it's too much of a bank, as soon as you go up, and I've experienced it, you're holding onto the door because you feel like you're going to tip over. So, yeah, I mean, it, it can be dangerous if you, if you haven't got your wits about you. It can be dangerous, but it's not a hard job. And if I, if I could do it, anyone could do it. So crack on, mate, do it. Um, tip and driving, tip and lorries is... Uh, it's fantastic. I never thought I would be driving a tip a lorry when I, when I, when I thought about taking my test. Tipping lorries was not at the forepoint of my mind. I was thinking multi drop, but yeah, tipping lorries are by far, in my opinion, and it's slightly biased, but the best. <laughs> um, Bigner or Big Big NC eighty seven C. Hi Luke. Want to answer all your unanswered questions on your other videos? Next. <laughs> uh, Lewis, Lewis one. Uh, what to take your test in IE Auto Manual? What's the best option, and what did you do? Thanks. So, what's it best to take your test in? I would probably say it's best to take your test in a manual. Um, at least then you've got experience in driving a manual truck, and when you do go out and get a job, uh, it doesn't matter what truck you drive. Um, personally, I pass my test in an automatic, uh, which is good and bad like it was it's easy on the test i suppose but i've never driven a manual truck like not a split not a split shear, uh, gear shift one anyway i've driven a little seven and a half ton truck with manual gear but i haven't driven a big truck uh, or a class two truck with with a manual gear stick so i, I want to do it i want to drive one but i haven't actually driven one yet um so my advice is if you can do your test in a manual at least you've got it under your belt do you know what i mean uh, da, 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 da. next question comes from Sean Vernon. What the hell is that beeping? Well, I'm pretty sure the beeping in question that he's referring to is this. See this being a bit of a nightmare to get out. And that is purely my left indicator on. Um, and it's telling me that there's something on the left hand side. So, I, in fact, I can do it now. Beeped a little bit. There's something on the left. But basically it beeps on the inside and it tells me there's something on the left hand side of my vehicle. Uh, but not only that, but on the outside when I indicate left, it will, uh, there's an audible warning saying, warning, truck turning left. Um, so which is pretty cool. It's uh, safe, isn't it, really, at the end of the day. Poor V. Hi Luke, I'm a fellow class two driver. What would you say was the best and worst bits of the job for you? For me, I love being out in the open road. I hate being sent to sites you couldn't get a transit van in, let alone a truck. Keep up the good vlog, mate. Uh, <laughs> I laughed at that because it's true. <laughs> it's part, I hate being sent to sites you couldn't even get a transit van into, let alone a truck. That is 100% true. Um, I mean, to be honest, I'm pretty much on with you on this one. Like, I love driving. I love being out on the open road, just driving, just chillaxing while concentrating looking at the world around me do you know what i mean I'd, i've i've never been abroad i've never really driven very far before this um so i i kind of got out of the town i live in if you like getting my hdv license and i started experimenting or experiencing rather um more things out around so i mean for me yeah definitely just driving just going in that direction is it's probably the best thing the worst thing is when you have to stop and like you said when you get to site and you've got to turn into tight fucking places and they're like oh yeah drive yeah the previous driver did it yeah yeah my ass did he but you still manage to get in at the end of the day don't you it's just a bit of a struggle but uh yeah I'm, i mean i'm with you on that one what what you said scott andrews does your company know you vlog um as far as i'm aware yes um it's a bit awkward because I, I work for one company 
or rather one company pays my wages, but then we're subcontracted to another t company where we lay the tarmac. Uh, the company I, company I work for don't do just tarmac. Um, so the company I work for who pay my wages, yes, I'm pretty sure they know I vlog because I come in before, got some fuel, and the boss has said to me, how's the YouTube going? So I'm pretty sure he knows I vlog. As for the company I subcontract for, I don't know if they know or not. I know a lot of drivers know. Uh, I know most of the I know most people know I vlog. I just don't know if the higher up higher up archies. I don't know if they vlog. Uh, I don't know if they know I vlog. But yeah, most of my fellow drivers and people do know. Yeah. Amy Litton, do you ever use the burger van place by work? Great bacon sarnies there. Right now. When I, when I saw this one come through, I laughed because I don't know who you are, Amy Litton. <coughs> or Aim, yeah, Amy Litton. I don't know if you know me. You must do. You must know there's a burger van around here. And there is. There's a burger van around the corner. But I've, and I swear to God, I've never, ever been to it. So I couldn't tell you. Oh, I could tell you. Do you ever use a burger van by work? No, I don't. <laughs> I couldn't tell you if it was any good, though. Um, how long do you get off Xmas? That's from James. We broke up on the 23rd, which was a Friday, and that was a half day. And we'd go back to work on the 5th of January. So yeah, it's about 10 days, something like that. Callan Bachelor, would you ever become an Arctic driver? Now this was quite a popular question. Uh, come from Callum Bachelor, come from Bradley Williams, come from Ray and Watt 84, Matthew Bromley Smith. Um, the answer is yes, I, I would like to become a, an HTV Class 1 driver eventually, but truth be told, I'm rather enjoying what I'm doing now, so there's not really more I can really say on that. Like, I want to do Class 1, but I, I don't want to pay for it myself, um, but I'm enjoying doing the Class 2 right now, so that's good. Next question comes from Alex Keel. What's the strangest thing you've encountered on your journeys? What's the strangest thing? I don't know. Like, it's a difficult question. What's the strangest thing you've encountered on your journeys? I've driven through a golf course. <laughs> there's a there's a place called uh, Minchinhampton. Um, and basically you've got, a, you've got a golf course on your left, golf course on your right, and they hit the balls. <laughs> and it does make you think, shit, what if, that, what if that hits me? I suppose that's the strangest thing. I'll have to put a picture up on your screen now. Um, Chili Pepper, if that's your real name. Chili Pepper, what's the craziest thing you've seen while driving? Oh shit, that's the same question. Yeah, uh, same as Alex's question, mate. Probably Minchinhampton. It's a weird place, but um, tight as well. James, uh, what camera do you use to film the road? That's my dash cam. So um, I use a dash cam, uh, it's called a Nextbase 402G. I've actually got it in my bag here, let me get it out. Do do do, where are you? There we go. Yeah, it's called a Nextbase uh, 402G. It's an in-car cam uh, built in GPS. So basically, um, when you get home and you put your SD card into your computer, it will tell you not only how fast you're going, but where you've been as well. So it's pretty cool. I think at the time it cost like nearly 200 quid. It's a bit cheaper now. Uh, Glyn Coates, did you have someone with you on the first day with this company who showed you the ropes? Yes, I did. I had a, a chap called Mick um, who taught me for two days. <laughs> that was all the training I got. It was two days training and thrown in the deep end. But I think that's the best way because I learned very quickly. I had to learn. So, I mean, it's really good. I think having two days was more than plenty. Um, I already know how to drive. It was just basically operating the tipping gear. That was that was it, that's all I needed just to know. Um, Jonathan Parks, great vid, cheers for the shout out. Notice someone mentioned MPQC card in the comments. I think, I think if I did that, as CPC after my test as part of my 35 hours, it would make me more employable as a tipper driver, what do you reckon? I don't need to do initial CPC units two and four because I passed the test before 97. Yes, uh, MPQC card is otherwise known as Epic card. Um, and a lot of people, 
uh, well, companies rather, are wanting their drivers to have such a card. Now I've got my card on me, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. So it's a driver skill card and I do apologise for the mugshot. But um, yeah, basically it means that I've taken a test and uh, I can tip safely. Uh, and a lot of, I wouldn't say employers necessarily, but sites that you go to tip to want the drivers to have such a card. Therefore, uh, employers want you to have it as well. But it's, it's mainly the sites that are wanting it, not the employers. But it's de definitely a good thing to have, 100%. Uh, T Lovelock, who is your favourite YouTube truck vlogger? And also, who else is your favourite YouTube vlogger outside the truck and world? My favourite truck vlogger, I would have to say, was uh, Fastest Fox. Um, when I started doing my lessons and become an HDV driver, when I was working for the logistics company, I would watch all his videos from when he was going through the exact same thing. Uh, when he got his class two result, when he got his class one result, I was already a driver then, but when he got his class two result uh, and started driving out on the road, that was, that was um, what inspired me to do my test. What inspired me to do my vlogging was um, Truck and Dre in the UK, because I, I thought his vlogs were really good, uh, and I liked the I just liked the, the way he did them, so I thought I'd do it as well, in my own style. Favourite YouTube vlogger outside of the trucking world? I would probably would have to say PewDiePie. Um, I, I, I find it funny. I know some people think he's a right dickhead, but it's just my sense of humour. So I, I like PewDiePie. Uh, what, what the bloody hell is your name? Cheddar's Ache Park Clips. How often do you in Flax in Bristol? Basically, how often do I go in Flax in Bristol? Because my dad works there. Um, yeah, so there's a, a plant in Bristol called Flax. Well, called Stancombe Quarry, uh, but in Flax. And um, the company who we are subcontracted to own that quarry. Yeah, I go in there quite quite a few times. I, to be fair, I have not been on it in that site for a couple of months now, maybe two, three months. But uh, yeah, there was a time when we were always going in there and I expect I'll be in there again soon, without a doubt. Where does he work? Is he on the way bridge or uh, does he drive one of the mucker things? Gareth King, uh, is your head disproportionate size to the rest of your body? I don't know, like, is your head a disproportionate size to the rest of your body? I don't know, I'm six foot four, 25 stone, I've got a belly bigger than like most people's. I can still see my dick, just so you know. <laughs> but I don't know about my head. Uh, how are you paid? You said you get salary, but what if you work till 8 p.m. one day? Do you get any extra or a bonus or anything like that? Uh, you must have contracted hours per week. That's from Graham's Life 24. I am paid weekly, a uh, weekly salary of almost £500 a week. Um, it's just under £500. It doesn't matter how many hours I do in that week. I could do 40 hours, I could do 50 hours, I could do 60 hours. I still get paid the exact same every week. Um, I'm not contracted to any hours. I, I, it, I, in my contract, it doesn't say I'm contracted to any hours. Um, I guess that's a zero hour contract in a way, but if I take a week off work, I still get paid a full wage. Um, I've had a zero hour contract, well, I've had an eight hour contract before while working at Couriers, and if I took a week off, I would only get paid for those eight hours. But no, if I take a week off where I am now, I get paid the same each week. So I, I don't have a contracted hours per week, I have a contracted salary per week. So uh, yeah, it doesn't matter how many hours I work, I get paid the same, which is good or bad, depends, depends on the week, how busy it was. Uh, next question comes from, did I say who that came from? Yeah, Graham's Life 24 that one came from. Next question comes from uh, Deninja, Deninja Mason. Uh, Hi mate, did you get this job without experience in CPC? Usually drivers have to slog it out for agency for a year or two. Yes, I got this job without any experience. I was extremely lucky. Um, I passed my, well, I took my, took my lessons in January. Uh, well, done, my, done all my theory in January. Um, passed all my tests in March, including my practical. Uh, it took me a week to find this job and then I started the next the next Monday. So yeah, I passed my tests in March and then on the Friday, and then not the following Monday, but the Monday after, I was working for this company I'm working for now. Absolutely zero experience. Um, didn't have any epic cards like I've already mentioned, didn't have any qualifications, any experience. Straight on the job, two days work, um, training with Mick and I was out by myself. 
So, I mean, I was extremely lucky. Um, and I know the guy that I trained, uh, mentioned in the vlog or two before, uh, he's in the same boat as me. He had no experience, just come straight onto the job. Uh, and, and I trained him up for a week and a half. But, um, yeah, no, I didn't have any experience. I was extremely, extremely lucky. But, yeah, most people, most people need experience before they get into the job. And most employers won't employ you unless you've got a year or two experience. So, yeah, most people need to go on to the agency work. I do consider myself extremely lucky. Extremely lucky. Uh, the Life of Floyd. Hello, mate. He's a long-time subscriber. On your videos, hello, it's me. Uh, your third latest video. How on earth did you make such a good intro? Please, I want to know it all. Uh, my intros and outros are not actually made by myself. Um, I wish I could do them that good. I mean, I'm trying to make them that good. But no, uh, they're paid for uh, by a developer called uh, Ink Studio. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. But yeah, um, basically, he's he's on a website called fiverr.co.uk or .com something like that um, and I'd just come across his, his, his intros I thought they were really cool and I thought I'd have them as well so yeah most of them come from him which is really good uh, Jonathan Parks how you carry many different loads that you don't want to cross contaminate my question is how often do you need to physically clean the body out oh just lost that question yeah there we go found it um, that is a very good question now normally we deliver just tarmac um, so we don't really clean the body out too much. Uh, I get in with a shovel and I shovel out the odd bit which is stuck. But other than that, it's um, it's pretty clean all the time. If we get sand, then um, the sand goes on top of the tarmac. If there's any in it, it shouldn't be. If we tip the sand out and then whatever's left, we then clean out. So I get in there with uh, the, the, the the fucking spade. I forgot what it's called then, and I shovel out all the sand uh, and just make sure there's definitely no tarmac in there as well. Then we get on the jet wash and we spray it out. So, uh, but yeah, we don't tend to have to do it too often because we don't cross-contaminate too often. Mainly it's tarmac, I do. What software do you edit your videos on? That's from Fergal Mage? 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 Sorry if I can't pronounce your names, by the way. I'm really rubbish at pronunciation. I use Adobe Elements, I think it's 14. Um, yeah, um, Adobe Elements 14. That's, that's the software I use. Uh, Adrian Hurrell, your vlogs are superb. Where did you learn to put it all together? Um, honestly, I, it's, it's all self-taught. I taught myself, as with most things in life, I've taught myself everything, pretty much. Uh, how to vlog, how to edit. Uh, I taught myself to play drums and guitar and piano. I just I just teach myself. I pick it up. I, I start learning and I pick it up. Um, Adrian Hurrell also asked your vlogs. I know, he's already done that. Getting these messed up here. <laughs> Sean Peter Mung Mungham. Uh, how long have you been a truck driver for? Uh, already, meant, already said that basically. So I passed my test in March 2016. So uh, just under a year. It took me 10 weeks to pass my license. Really proud of that. Uh, right, this is a message from Andy B. Do you find a 50 hour week too much? How many hours would you drive out of that 50 hour? <coughs> um, no. Uh, 50 hours flies by it really does 10 hour day uh, if you start at like 7 o'clock then you finish at 5 o'clock and the day just fucking flies and I'm not even joking like it just flies so fast realistically oh, pardon me realistically driving wise I don't do too much other drivers probably do uh, I probably do four and a half hours driving a day maybe five um and that's really the high end, really. This comes from uh, Yasser Rashid. Hi, Luke. Uh, I'm currently waiting for my uh, application pack from HTV Driving School. Just two questions. How easy is it for a new driver to get a job? Is it worth going with agency to look for a permanent job? So, okay, I've already answered this, really, haven't I? How easy is it for a new driver to get a job? Not very easy. A lot of people want experience. I was lucky to get straight into a job. If you know someone in your family who works as a truck driver or works as like a mechanic or something like that, get them to ask their boss if they would employ you. Because that's pretty much how I got this job. My dad works for this company. Uh, is it worth going with agency to look for a permanent job? I mean, you might struggle getting a job, so yeah, you might have to go to an agency and just see if they can offer you a job. Next question comes from 
Chris P. Bacon, how many hours do you do a week? How many jobs do you get done a day? What's your average mileage driven a day? Do you ever come close to using up all your driving time? Uh, I think I'm doing class one, decent videos, man, keep up. <coughs> Firstly, how many fucking questions do you want to ask? <laughs> uh, secondly, right, so how many hours do you do a week? So on average, I'd probably say I do 50 hours a week. How many jobs do you get done a day? Probably about two or three jobs a day. What's your average mileage driven in a day? Uh, that's a difficult because I don't really look, to be honest. Um, I would probably say around 300, between 200 and 300 miles, I would say, a day. Yeah, about that. Uh, do you ever come close to using up all your driving time? Nope. So um, you can legally do, this is testing me now, you, I think you can legally do nine hours a day driving, uh, extended to 10. Um, I, like I said, I do about four and a half hours driving a day, maybe five. So I don't get close to it. Uh, this comes from Wallpaper Flembot. A bit of an odd question, but there isn't really a straight answer on the net. When you do your practical CPC demonstration, is there any driving of the truck? Can you drive it to the test centre? Also, are the videos on YouTube by EP Training and others accurate? Um, to answer your question, yes, the, the training videos by EP Training and others are accurate. I actually use them myself. Um, the training truck all I use as well. Uh, I paid for was it was basically the exact same thing so I mean I would probably advise for your mod 4 which is what he's talking about watch that that video by EP training because that is 100% correct definitely I watched that video like five six times uh, and and it really helped me out um, is there any driving no but you can drive the truck to the test center yes but there's no driving on the actual test uh, this comes from James Wilday. Hi Luke, I was wondering if you could do more point of view videos. Thanks. Yes, I can. Easy question. Thank you, mates. Uh, well, fucking now, what's this? You guys are your names. Cheddar's K8 Park Clips. <laughs> uh, he asked a question uh, that a lot of people have, like Chili Pepper and Razzler King and Declan Todd. Uh, and they are, what's your favourite truck to drive and why, basically. Um, now, I've only driven MANs, so I can't really um, say I prefer driving a different truck because I've never driven a different truck. MANs are the only truck I've driven, so it has to be an MAN. Uh, Rizzler King also asks, if you could drive any other type of Class 2, i.e. not tipper, what would it be? Uh, grab hire, definitely. Grab, grab trucks. They look really cool with a little crane on them. So um, it's basically the same body as this, but with a crane on top as well. Um, I suppose they tip. So I don't know if that's within your regulation there, but it's strictly not just a tipper truck, it's a grab truck. So yeah, I would, I would like to drive a grab truck. If I couldn't drive a grab truck, if that's not in your rules here, um, then probably a cement mixer. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Uh, the company I work for actually has the cement mixers as well, so it could be in the future, you never know. Uh, John Paul, uh, Magne Mag Mac Macken Target. <laughs> Any advice? Uh, aim taking my week's driving, then test on Friday. Thanks, Jay. Hang on, so your name's Jay, but your YouTube name is John Paul. Right, okay, Jay. Uh, advice is listen to your extractor, try and get as much driving done as you can. Uh, normally, when you go out driving, there's two of you. Uh, if your driver instructor says he wants to go first, just say, yeah, me, I want to go first. Uh, also, if you've already taken your test, I'm sorry that this is late. <laughs> James Smith, hi Luke, I'm thinking about becoming a HGV driver, class two. Is there any advice on what, is there any advice on what book slash study information I should get before the test? Uh, I've got a copy of the official DVSC, DVSA guide on driving goods vehicles, anything else you'd recommend to prepare for the test? I've actually, I, I, downloaded, the, I downloaded that DVSA uh, guide myself uh, the only other things I did was look online uh, and practice 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 that's basically it look at YouTube videos and, and things like that uh, hammerhead bear reviews hi Luke I haven't I haven't been subscribed to you for that long uh, if you already answered this question in a previous video then my bad I just haven't seen it I used to drive a tipper truck do a muck away uh, from what I have seen of your truck, you have an insulated aluminium body for tarmac. Yes, that's correct. I don't know if you have done much muck, muck away or not, but my question is, if someone wanted to get into driving tippers, would you advise them to go into tarmac or muck away? 
what would you say was the pros and cons to each job? Cheers, mate. Now that I think is a very good question. So, in fact, I put pictures on the screen now. There's 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 loads of different types of tipper drivers, or tipper lorries rather. Uh, an example would be tarmac lorries and muckaway lorries. Now, they both tip, but they have two different jobs entirely. So, with muckaway lorries, I would say that it's very go go go. You you, you go to a place, you get loaded with mud, normally. You go to a quarry, you tip. You go back to that site, get loaded with mud. You go back to the quarry and tip. You go back to the site, get loaded with mud. You go back to the quarry and tip. You see where this is going. Um, I've never actually div driven a muck lorry myself, but I've, I do know people in the industry, and that's basically what it is. It's go, 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 doing the same thing over and over again. And from what I hear, there's not a lot of, not a lot of distance drive driving involved. You go from one place to another, and that's it. Now, with tarmac lorries, with the company I work for in particular, we go anywhere within, let's say, a 150-mile radius, uh, north, east, south, and west. Um, we go to different places almost every day, and even if we do go to the same site, we're in a different location on that site because the other bit's already been tarmacked. So, with muckaway uh, lorry drivers, it's very go, 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 and it's the same again and again and again. With with tarmac lorry drivers, it's a very much slow paced. Uh, sometimes you get on site, you've got to wait a couple of hours before even being tipped. You tip, you go back to site, to get uh, to base, get loaded, and then you go somewhere else. It's very, I would say, it's more slow paced. Um, a lot more waiting around, less driving, less go, go, go. But I would also say slightly more um, difficult because when you're on the pavement you're getting pushed you've got to be on the brakes at the same time too much you stop not enough you roll forward and tarmac goes on the floor so yeah I mean I I would say in, in my opinion tarmac was a better job than muck away but I'm very biased um, so yeah tarmac also the, per, the people I know who do muck away get paid more so that could be a benefit of doing muck away south East Cashew, Cashew, yeah. What radio station do you have on? A uh, radio's got six presets. I listen to BBC Radio 1, BBC Radio 2, Heart FM, uh, BBC Wiltshire, Jack FM, and Sam FM. And that's in the order as well. James Smith, hi Luke, can you tell us a bit about trucker sat navs, how reliable the routes are? Uh, does the weight of the vehicle get involved? Uh, what routes does it take? Does height play a role? Blah de blah de blah. That's also a, quite a common question. Francisco Amelda, uh, Mr. Foxy Trucker. Basically, I've got a TomTom Tom Trucker 6000. Uh, it cost me, I think, about 250 quid, something like that at the time. Can't remember. Uh, it's pretty good, gets me from A to B, it does avoid all the, the bridges, uh, it does avoid most of the weight limits as well. Um, I say most of the weight limits because it does avoid uh, official weight limits. Like if there's a sign saying weight limit, it won't take you down that road. But it will take you down roads where there should be a weight limit or it's just too tight for a lorry to get down. Uh, it's just, it's legally not uh, a limited road. So it can take you down some roads that you shouldn't go down. But um, other than that, it's pretty good. It does the job, gives me from me to be, so I cannot moan. Uh, Death Rider, what made you start YouTube? I've been doing YouTube for ages. Like before trucking, I was I was uploading random videos of gameplay from uh, like my Xbox, from my PC. If you go back in time, you see short movies that I tried creating. I just I've always done YouTube, and like it just hadn't really kicked off until doing this, doing the vlogging on the trucks. So um, yeah, always done YouTube. But what made me start doing it? Money, I suppose. I always. I always thought that doing YouTube would earn me lots and lots of money. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> uh, Trucker Chris 94. Hi Luke, how often do you have to talk your wheel, your wheels? Uh, great videos, by the way. Uh, try and talk my video, uh, my, my videos. I try and talk my wheels twice a week. Uh, beginning, of, beginning of the week and end of the week. No. Yeah, beginning of the week and end of the week. Uh, do you ever go to Truck Fest? If so, can you vlog? No, I've never been to Truck Fest, not since I was a kid. My dad took me once. Uh, if I did go to Truck Fest, Truck Fest, and yeah, I would vlog, but no, I'd, I haven't been for a while. I don't think I will go, but we never know. Michael Briggs, uh, you attending Wessex Truck Show at all in 2017? Again, could do, but it's not on the books. Jamie Wickstead, what maker truck do you drive? Uh, that's an MAN. 
Uh, great video. What lorry do you drive? From Stephen Boyd, MAN. Uh, as a new driver, what were slash are you most daunted about? That's from Harry W. Good question. Uh, when I first started, I was daunted about the size of the vehicle. Like I wasn't used to the size of the vehicle. I didn't like to reverse. So what daunted me most, I would probably say, was having to turn round. If I went past my junction, my turn, and I had to go down, that would that would annoy me a little bit. So yeah, that's probably what I was most daunted about, having to turn round. Uh, where do you see yourself career-wise in three years' time? Best work best and worst parts of the job what surprised you most about this job I don't know where I see myself in three years time it's one of those questions that I've never been able to answer um, I can still see myself driving um, I still see myself vlogging um, I'm hopefully driving class one but I don't know like I said before I'm happy doing class two at the moment so I don't know on that one uh, best and worst parts of the job best parts of the job is just driving I love driving absolutely love it the worst part I, I would say was waiting around I don't mind waiting around for an hour maybe maybe an hour and a half but after that it starts getting quite boring you use up a lot of data on your phone so you have to download stuff um, I don't read books but if I did I would bring I would bring a lot of books in what surprised you uh, the most about this job it's probably the fact that it's not go 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 like it's so relaxed with most trucking jobs, I get the I get the feeling it is go go go. But with this, you get loaded, you go to the place, and you could be there an hour or two, maybe three hours easily, uh, and you just chill out. You just chill out, man, and you get paid for it. So that's what surprised me the most about it. Uh, big NC eighty seven C. Where's the Saint George flag gone? Uh, I got a new truck. It's in the old truck. Um, I left it in there, uh, and it got sold. So it's lost basically. It's gone. But I only really add it up for the euros. Um, but I might get another another one. Let me know if you want me to get another one in, and I will. Uh, Dorian Christian Alexandria Sklu. What company are you working for? I can't really say what company I'm working for because I don't want to get in trouble for mentioning the name. Um, all I can say is I deliver tarmac, and if you type tarmac into Google, you might find out. Tarmac delivery or something like that, you might find out. Uh, George Roberts, why did you decide to become a HTV driver? And then Peacekeeper followed up by, yes, why did you become a HUV driver? And then I had to include this because it is funny. <laughs> the life of Floyd. Because careers are shit. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> uh, the real reason I wanted to become a HUV driver... Um, it always goes back to as a, ki as a kid. I used to live in Wooten Bassett, or Royal Wooten Bassett as it was known, uh, as it's known now. And the RAF used to go past the high street all the time um, and seeing their, their lorries in a convoy like that really made me want to do it myself so I wanted to join the army but my mum wouldn't let me or my dad so um, yeah I I couldn't do that and my dad already drove in a lorry or already drove a lorry at that time went out of him loads of times as a kid and it just sort of etched in my brain really that it'd be really cool and I've always wanted to drive I've always known I wanted to drive even if it was just a van but um, yeah, that's that's how I become a HGV driver. I um, memories as a kid, really, I suppose. Callum Moss, what's the worst and best thing about being an HGV driver? Uh, again, the best bit is driving. I love driving. If you like driving, get a driving job. The worst part is the waiting around. Already, already gone through that, really. Would you consider doing nights? You get around one pound fifty an hour extra most companies, and you would get to see your kids during the day. That's from Graham's Life Twenty Four. I would consider doing nights, yes. Uh, I probably wouldn't do it for an extra £1.50 an hour. Um, again, I don't get paid per hour, so I, it wouldn't work that way for me. I'd want an extra 50 quid a night to do that. Uh, as, as with regards to you get to see your kids during the day, I don't think I would because I've done nights before. Uh, I started at like 7, 8 in the evening and I'd finish at 7, 8 in the morning. Um, working for the logistics company. And... I'd get home and I'd go to bed and I wouldn't wake up until a couple of hours before I need to go back to work again and so I don't think I saw my kids as much as I do working now so um, but yeah I would consider doing nights but more than I would want more than 150 an hour uh, and that's it we're back at the beginning of the question so that's all the questions that are answered uh, well asked most of them anyway 
Uh, I didn't want to make this video too long because we're already at nearly 45 minutes. So yeah, if I haven't answered your question uh, or you've got another question, leave it in this video um, and I will answer that in another Q&A video uh, later on in the year, well, in the new year. So uh, really that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching this video. Um, before I finish, this is going to be cool. Before I finish, what camera should I do this on? So on this camera. Ready? Hit that subscribe button. Yes, that's cool, isn't it? Hit that subscribe button uh, if you haven't subscribed already. Uh, down here in the bottom left, it's going to be a video for you to watch. Um, and yeah, if you haven't already donated on my Just Given page, feel free to donate. We are at £130 now, I think. So, um, cracking news that is. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, have a good new year, and uh, until then, drive safe. Bye bye.